Hello guys and welcome back gear and progression guide updated for 2024. It's currently the start of April and we've had a lot of changes to the game uh, with regards to gear and progression. We have a couple changes coming as well that will work into the gear and progression guide. We're going to start from basically nothing uh, and work our way all the way to the endest of end game gear uh, in Black Desert for both the DR and evasion builds. And I'm also going to explain to you which build you should be going on the class that you have chosen. So, uh, this is a site called Garmoth.com. Um, you're probably familiar on my channel. We do a lot of gear redeems. Uh, I help people with their gear score a lot. Um, uh, it's a very popular thing that we put up on YouTube. Very entertaining. Um, so, we're going to use this, uh, their gear planner here, um, to kind of showcase what uh, gear path you should be taking in the game. When you spawn into Black Desert, obviously, this is going to be very confusing to you. Um, lots of different, uh, helmets and equipment slots, lots of different stuff to do. We'll go through it one at a time. Um, first of all, you just need to run through the main storyline. Okay. Um, as you're going through the main storyline, you're going to get stuff called Naru gear. Okay. Um, and you, again, you just get this as a quest reward for progressing through the main story. You're also going to get something called beginner blackstones. Um, there's only... Currently, they just simplified Blackstone, so everything in this guide should be up to date for all the simplifications that they did in the game for this year. So there's only one type of beginner Blackstones. They've made it super easy to understand uh, how to upgrade as a new player, and hopefully I uh, can kind of work out the rest of the kinks here. You're also going to get uh, Naru gear for your weapons. This is a witch. Keep in mind, this works for every single class in the game. It's the same for everybody. Um... So there's a Naru weapon for basically everything in the game. There's no Naru awakening weapon um, because once you hit level 56, usually you're getting the Tuvala. Uh, in this case, the Adsphera. Uh, and usually they give it to you at Pry. Um, and they give that to you for your doing your awakening and succession quest line. Uh, to be clear, uh, there are two types of specs that you can run on your class in Black Desert. I should probably cover that very quickly. Um, and you acquire extra people as you, you said, okay. Uh, you hit K in the top right of your screen. Um, you got succession and awakening. You can choose one or the other. Um, the difference is the awakening unlocks your awakening weapon and the awakening skill tree. Okay. So if you hit I, you can see that there's an awakening weapon here. Okay. Um, if you're a succession player, uh, you're really only going to be using your pre-awakening weapon and your offhand. In awakening, you're going to use all three weapons, but primarily the awakening weapon and the offhand, okay? Uh, both specs pretty dramatically change uh, the play style of every class in the game, and you kind of just pick the spec that suits you the most. If you're looking uh, at what class to choose in Black Desert, I look at, recommend my Choose Your Class Guide series. Uh, it's awesome, okay? Uh, it goes through every class and spec in the game. Uh, this is Witch, so obviously it unlocks the Awakening sp uh, skill tree for Witch, and I get access to those. Um, if I were a Succession player, uh, it basically changes uh, how your uh, pre-Awakening skills look uh, and kind of what happens with those skills. So, like, for example, Awakening Blizzard looks like this. It's a ranged skill, uh, and you can rain down uh, a lot of ice and whatnot on your opponent. But if you're going to use the Prime version of Blizzard... Um, it actually is just a swirling whirlwind all around you um, that hits the people right in front of you but does a massive amount more damage. So it kind of is just up to you. Make sure you pick uh, Succession or Awakening should be chosen ahead of time based on my Choose Your Class Guide series. Uh, by the time you reach this, uh, hopefully you've already made that choice. Now, very importantly, they're going to give you Naru accessories for the main storyline. You do not want to enhance these. You can wear them at base. Do not enhance them. All of your friends will make fun of you. Okay, it's kind of like that kid that got lice on his first day of school. You just made fun of him for the next 14 years for that. You don't do that, okay? Uh, don't be the kid that we're all making fun of because you put on, uh, you enhanced your Naru accessories. And just so you're clear, your guild can see your enhancements. So if you do something stupid, uh, they're going to make fun of you, okay? Um, the ones that you really want to enhance, okay? Uh, you can put them on at base. But the ones you really want to enhance uh, are the gloves, the armor, basically everything except for the accessories. You just want to enhance those up, okay? You want to push them all the way to pin, okay? Um, I recommend pushing the weapons first because it'll make 
like pushing through the main story easy. You're not going to need very much DP early on in the story, and you can kind of use health potions to kind of get through that. So I recommend the main hand uh, uh, first, and then upgrade um, the sub weapon. Uh, you're going to upgrade these all the way to pen, um, basically immediately when you get them. Uh, and as you go through the main story, when you finish Medaya, fear not, if you keep running out of beginner Blackstones, when you finish the Medaya quest line, you get like 5,000 or 10,000 of them, and you will be able um, to, to finish them, I promise, okay? And if you don't, you should probably just make a new account because it's doomed. Um, as you finish the main storyline, you should be turning, it's, the game should prompt you to turn Naru gear into Tuvala gear. And this is where you're going to kind of start doing the seasonal stuff because you need to make a seasonal character when you start. The game should have already covered that for you. Uh, so I'm not going to go too much into it. If you don't have a seasonal character um, and you are not doing some sort of weird Iron Man series, you need to go back and get a seasonal character. Is it is it worth it? Yes. I don't care how much time you've invested. You need to go back uh, and make a seasonal character. That's just the way that it goes. Uh, you will make uh, way more money. Um, and you'll progress way faster this way. So you're going to have... It'll transition into Pry Tuvala gear. Now, Tuvala... Uh, was different the last time I made this gear and progression guide. Now, you can actually enhance this to try guaranteed every time. Okay, so you're going to get... Um, also, they've simplified all of the Tuvala, like, ore and stuff. It's all just... Um, there's time fill, Blackstones, you use them. Just click those all the way up. You're going to be just fine. It's guaranteed all the way to try, okay? So I'm just going to pump this straight to try because... Quite frankly, it's free for you, okay? They're going to give you a lot of free seasonal materials. This, getting to this point in the game is basically the easiest thing that you can do. And keep in mind, you can already almost start grinding at this point. You're also going to start getting uh, Tuvala accessories as well as you progress your way through the pass. Uh, you're going to want to, you're going to pick up a pen Tuvala ring and a pen Tuvala earring for hitting level 60 and 61 respectively. Um, basically, it, it'll be up here in the top right. Um... As you go through, the game will prompt you and you can open it up and just kind of follow the on-screen prompts and get that done. Um, you're going to get a um, an enhancement uh, stone as you go through seasonal that will guaranteed enhance one of your accessories from Tet to Pen. It's a blue little stone. You can't miss it. It's toward the end of the pass. Um, you want to use that on the weapon every... I mean, on the, um, on the necklace every time. Okay, so get a Tet Tuvala necklace. And then you're going to guarantee, click it, bada bing, bada boom. 58 and 60 for the season pass. I apologize. Okay, so at level 58, you're going to get a two pen Tuvala ring. And at level 60, you're going to get a pen Tuvala earring or vice versa, whatever. Um, so as you progress through the game, you're just going to get this stuff, guys. Like just doing the main story. This is all just stuff you're going to get, okay? Um, and you got to do your weekly um, to kind of level up the rest of this. You should only have to do like one or two, maybe two weeklies. Typically only one. The weeklies now are actually at the node manager. So if you hit G or O, okay, click on suggested on your seasonal character. I think you have to be on your seasonal character. Um, there will be seasonal paths, like weekly things that you can do. I might be under recurring. Um, but like, yeah, you could just do your weekly quest at any one of the, the early game grind spots in the game. On my YouTube channel, I have guides for all the different like low end grind spots in the game. So you can check those out. Pick the one that you like the most. I recommend Desert Naga and Desert Fogans are very quick. Uh, they help you get a Tannis Elements, will help you get your Infinite Potion, and they're pretty good money as well. So Desert Nagas, Desert Fogans are really good. Um, if you don't care about your Infinite Potion, you just want to make money, or you're going to buy your Infinite Potion, Centaurs or Gahas are definitely probably the way to go in that case. Uh, but like, basically you go to the Node Manager of any of the major nodes where you're going to go grind, and the Node Manager should be the one that has the weekly quest, and that's going to give you like 600 time-filled stones. It's a lot of enhancing for your for your seasonal. So basically, uh, you're basically going to max out your seasonal really, really quickly. Okay, so I'm basically just going to put this all at pen. I'm going to assume that you're able to get there. You do not want to graduate seasonal until everything is absolutely pen. Okay, at least on your accessories wise. Um, early on in this, this is your alchemy stone spot. Uh, slot, you're really just going to use a Destruction Spirit Stone uh, or a Takros Stone, which the game will give you. Although I would preserve these un unless you're grinding at a place that has pretty good EXP. So if you're grinding at like a Valencia Grind Zone that isn't Centaurs, uh, the Takros Spirit Stone is totally fine. It's an amazing Spirit Stone. That, I mean, it's an amazing Alchemy Stone. Definitely use that one. Um, if you're kind of out of Takros Stones or you don't want to use it, the Destruction Spirit Stone Blue Grade 
is definitely the one you want to use. It's super, super cheap um, to buy off the central marketplace. Um, just, again, there's two grades. There's like the green outline grade and there's a blue outline, outline grade. Again, if you're colorblind, just take your best guess. It's 50-50. Um, but when these run out of durability, you can't actually um, downgrade that. Like you can't actually like repair them at all. Okay, so you have to grind them up. Okay, you can throw them away. Don't do this. And when it runs out of durability and it's red, just hit L. Okay, just hit L. Go to the grind tab. Okay, and grind it up. Okay, it'll grind into something called mythical, mystical spirit powder. This stuff. This stuff can be used later down the road once you get your Veil's Heart. You get free stuff to gas up your Veil's Heart or your real alchemy stones. Right? So it's just basically being um, um, cost efficient. Okay. So on top of the Destruction Spirit Stone, there's also the option to go for the Ator's Power Stone. You get that through the main storyline, and that's the, um, that is the Alchemy Stone that you absolutely should use when you're a new player. Uh, Ator's Power Stone looks like this. Um, right here, it has one Sheet AP on it, and it has really, really good, um, like, stat effects uh, on the Alchemy Stone itself. There are a lot of people that are going to try to tell you to go for Khan's Heart. And I'm going to tell you right now, you do not do this. Okay, there are three types of cons hearts in the game. Uh, and you get them from doing the guild boss con three times. You get to select one for free, basically. You should pick the life one every time. The defense one is not worth it. The splendid stone is better. Um, and this one is not worth it because you're essentially wasting 5 billion silver uh, on an upgrade of one sheet AP because this is exactly the same as Ator's Power Stone. It just has one more sheet AP and you're spending 5 billion silver on it, which is not worth it at all when you could just upgrade to the Vel's Heart uh, altogether and just have a better Alchemy Stone on top of it later. So really, you should be going from Ator's Power Stone to Vel's Heart. So... Now we're at this point. This should not take you very long at all. Honestly, it probably took you less time to get to this point than it did for me to explain it. Um, as far as um, artifacts go at this point, you're going to get some monster damage artifacts. Uh, one, you're going to get from the Black Spirit just for like, it'll just be a quest in your Black Spirit. You just log it, it's just an autocomplete. Uh, it'll also give you a DR one. You can use that one initially. Um, and if you don't understand how these works, don't worry about it. I'm about to explain it uh, really, really simply. Essentially, um, all artifacts are they enhance your your stats just a little bit um and honestly they can be super impactful into the late game early game it's just going to give you a little bit more combat exp you cannot buy artifacts off the marketplace but you can buy the light stones light stones enhance artifacts okay so you can wear two artifacts both artifacts can hold two light stones that's four light stones total if you put four light stones together they will give you a set effect there's many different set effects in the game don't complicate it early on. Just use the combat EXP one. Um, ooh, what are the, what is that called? It's not predation. It's combat. It's which light stone is that? Is it this one? Oh, I'm gaming. So it's the light stone of combat. Really cheap guys. They're basically always on the marketplace. Just buy four of these. Okay. Just buy four of these and you're going to throw them in your, in your, um, in your artifacts and you're going to put those artifacts on. Um, and you open your artifact inventory again, I have a UI guide. If you wanted to figure out what all these menus and stuff do, just go check it out on my YouTube channel. Uh, but if you click on the artifact menu right here, I actually have two of these. I will show you. I actually have three of them cause I'm an idiot. Um, I'm Dory and I forget, I'm forgetful when I made three on accident, but you can see right here, if I put these two artifacts on, um, combat, oh, that one on. Oh, okay. Take that off. Put that one on. Sometimes the game's kind of squirrely. Okay, but you can see um, now I have Dedication, which is Combat EXP plus 300%. And again, that's just because I have these four Light Stones installed. Keep in mind, that's not including the Light Stones themselves. So each Light Stone's 25%. There's four of them. That's 100% right there. Plus 300% from the set effect. That's 400% Combat EXP all the time when you're grinding as a new player. That's a massive buff, and it's not a scroll or anything. You can basically have it running all the time. Also, if you put your character on a dummy, it's very, very useful uh, for putting your character on a dummy and AFK training overnight uh, because the combat EXP does stack uh, on those dummies, but skill EXP does not, okay? So just put four Lightstone Artifacts uh, combats in here. Um, I'll just go ahead for posterity's sake. Uh, I will go ahead and fill these out.
again this is all you do this immediately this is super quick you just bang straight through this this little tome right here i know this looks really confusing the game's gonna give you an adventure tome just equip it right away so just put this on there's an upgrade to this adventurer's tome it's actually two upgrades we're only gonna talk about one for now um it's called the Changa Shira, uh, Tome of Wisdom. Just to be clear, the reason you want to equip this is because it gives you more like polygonal bar rewards. So it gives you like more quest rewards, basically. Just put it on. It's it's If you forget to put it on, nobody cares. It's not that big of a deal, okay? Um, the Changa Tome, however, is actually very, very good. Um, and I highly recommend getting this the second that you can. I think you can get it at level 58. Uh, if you hit O and you go to the suggested tab, um, I'm going to unhide completed. I'm not sure where my, here it goes. The 53 actually is when you can do it. But like, keep in mind, it does take a lot of energy. So if you're going to do this, you're probably going to have to do it over time. So you can kind of get it started, do a third of it, get it done. Then come back when you have more energy and keep getting it done. This legendary leveling with the Changa and quests. Okay. This is what uh, allows you to get the Changa Tome. The Changa Tome gives you the polygonal bar chance, whatever. That's that same thing we talked about before. But it gives you combat EXP gain through quests plus 30%. Also gives you discovery radius plus 150. Uh, as far as we're aware, discovery radius plus 150 has to do with this little circle on your mini map. And it allows you to see mini uh, white dots from just a little bit further out uh, than you would before. This is very impactful in PvP. In PvE, it's like moderately impactful. You can kind of see Afaros and bosses and stuff a little bit better. But like in PvP, it's actually really, really impactful. So I recommend getting this for everybody um, just in general. Um, although we're not entirely certain what that is. The real reason a new player wants this is the combat EXP um, gained through quest rewards. If you get this before you finish, um, like after you finish Medaya, but before you do Valencia, you can actually hit level 60 or at least level 59 just by doing like the Valencia quest line. Um, like you'll go from like 56 to 58 in Valencia one. Boom, done. Okay. Comma will also get you to like 59. Um, and then like, it, like you can quest. There's like quest guides out there. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do it. But like there's quest guides out there. You can quest straight to 61 in about two hours. Um, so you can quest from 56 to 61 in like two and a half hours. If you just follow the guides online with this Jenga tome very very good not required you can just go out and grind keep in mind you're gonna have to go grind anyway um to get stuff okay so like it is what it is i hate questing so i personally didn't get the Changa tome uh for a long time when i was a new player um but it is what it is okay so um let's just assume that all your tuvala gear is at pen now okay because you're just gonna pump your way through it i highly recommend doing your weapons before your armor because if you one shot them they can't fight back. Okay. Can't do damage if they're dead. All right. And those low-end grind zones, you basically want to be one-shotting those mobs as quickly as possible. Okay. So, highly, highly recommend it. Just kind of banging out, um, banging out full pen Tuvala. Bada bing, bada boom. Then we got this. Now you're all set to graduate. At this point, it's graduation time. So when you graduate seasonal, guys, your first graduation is the pen composure necklace. Okay. Second graduation. Pen composure ring. I mean, um, belt. Man. Third. Pen composure ring. And the last graduation is the Perilla's Star. Everything after that is irrelevant. Nobody cares. Just take the 150 sacks, whatever. Nobody cares. Um, but like, so you want to take one belt or you want to take neck belt and a ring. Okay. Then when you get your Y menu, the little challenge tab, pick the earring, pick the try earring and enhance the try earring to pen guaranteed. So you should be sitting, if you did this correctly and you graduate seasonal three times, you should have a pen kabosha necklace, a pen kabosha belt, and a pen kabosha ring. And then you should also have a pen kabosha earring from the challenge tab. Okay? You're also going to get some base kaboshas for other shit, so I'm just going to throw that on. But that's also equivalent to a Tuvala earring at pen. So you can just leave your Tuvala earring on 
is totally fine. This is your first Jatina pen right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that there uh, for you guys there. Because uh, again, we talked about how to get to the Jatina menu. You just hit um, I to open up your equipment tab. Um, and it brings up. Hit I. Click on this little Old Moon Guild support tab right here. Click the Crescent Ring, not the Narc. Um, and do not click the Tongue Rat Earring. That is stupid. Morons pick the Tongue Rat Earring. Do not pick the Tongue Rat Earring. Do not pick the Narc Earring. You will pick the Crescent Ring or we will make fun of you. Um, basically, you can just fill all this stuff in as you go. Getting to Ted is really, really easy. You can get Old Moon Catalyst for just watching Twitch streams. Um, shameless plug. Uh, so just heads up, uh, the drops in our category, which are 24 seven, uh, will help you get the old moon catalyst for Tet, uh, here in this case, getting to pen is, uh, definitely a little bit more of a challenge because you can see how many black stones it requires, but Tet is really, really easy. So we're going to assume that you've reached this point here. Okay. At this point, you have to make a decision about what gear path you want to go. Okay. There are a lot of different classes in Black Desert. There are a lot of different specs on top of it. It can be extremely confusing to know which of the two gear paths you need to go for. There's damage reduction, there's evasion, and then there are mistakes. Okay? Um, you do not want to make mistakes. There are a lot of morons in this game that are going to try to tell you how to build your class and what to do on your class. You need to make the decision for yourself. I'm going to give you the most impartial... Um, explanation that I can and I'm going to try to explain it as thoroughly as I can and as simply uh, as I can um, what damage reduction classes are what evasion classes are and what classes can build either in this case okay um, but the way damage reduction and evasion work I know these are weird names and if you've never played an MMO before you probably don't understand what damage reduction is and evasion actually are uh damage reduction basically means that you're going to absorb a lot of incoming hits right you're going to take every single hit just think about it at a, at a simple level you're going to take every single hit but every single hit is going to do a lot less damage to you okay so for damage reduction builds having a lot of hp is important because the more hp pool you have the more time your damage reduction has to become valuable to you Okay, so HP is an extremely important stat for damage reduction builds. Okay, uh, evasion builds in contrast basically just say, okay, well, they're going to throw a lot of stuff at me and some of their attacks are just flat out going to miss. But the, the attacks that do hit me, they're going to hit me for the full damage. Okay, so exactly that. You're just dodging attacks, evasion. Okay, so this is the primary premise behind damage reduction and evasion. HP is still technically important in an evasion build, but it's not as important as it would be in a damage reduction build, if that makes sense. So that's D DR uh, and evasion, like kind of at a fundamental level there. All right, well, damage reduction classes, really easy. Dark Knight. Guardian. Wusa. Valkyrie. Keep in mind, if I list your class here and I don't indicate a spec, that means both specs of that class build damage reduction. Does not matter. Okay. Um, Ranger. Archer. Berserker. Warrior. Nova. And Draconia. Okay. Evasion classes would be something like Shy, would be something like Mystic, would be something like Striker, would be something like Kunoichi, Ninja, would be something like Hashashin. Um, although actually I'm gonna I'm gonna addendum that. Um, and. Okay, so this is the cut and dry, okay? This is the cut and dry. These classes are definitively... No one can really dispute this. These classes build this way, okay? If you find a ninja, for example, that has built a damage reduction build, that's because he's a moron, okay? If you find a mystic that, that is damage reduction, it's because they re-rolled. 
Um, okay. If you find a, a Dark Knight that is an evasion Dark Knight, you need to run screaming from that person because they're probably trying to kill you. Um, okay. Um, the classes that are kind of on the fence and can be built either that we're going to talk a little bit more about are Witch, Wizard, Lawn, Sage, Megu. Okay. Um, also notably added to this list is Scholar, who has always built damage reduction unless you're a moron. But Blue, you played Evasion Scholar. That's because I'm a moron. No, really, I didn't want to re-roll my gear because it, my Scholar was a tag for the months that I played it, and I didn't want to re-roll my gear. But if I was properly maining Scholar, I absolutely um, should be um, a damage reduction build. Thank you, guys. Sorceress. Um, honestly, the afterthought of everything that I've ever said ever. Uh, Tamer is also in the either column uh, in this case. Musa is definitely evasion. Um, Mewa is definitely evasion. Okay. Um, so like, in, all right, so these are the classes of Black Desert and how they, and how they should be built. Okay. Now I'm going to, there are a couple different, there are a couple exceptions to this rule. Um, we're going to talk primarily about the either column, but first we're going to talk about Mewa and Musa. Mewa and Musa are melee assassins in Black Desert. Um, Mewa has a massive amount of accuracy already. Um, and has evasion. Both of it, Mewa and Musa are brother-sister classes. They both have evasion passives uh, in their kit uh, and should be built the evasion way. Generally speaking, the way to tell if your class is evasion or DR is to do this. So when you open your class up, if you're wondering whether to build evasion or DR, you should scroll all the way to hit K, scroll all the way down to your passives, and you look at your passive here. You can see all DP plus two. That's pretty good. Um, all DP plus two. Okay, so now look at, okay, all AP plus one, all AP plus one. Calling Wolf, all evasion rate plus 10%. Okay, well, that's a lot of evasion. If you go through your class passives and you see a very significant uh, evasion, more than about 2% of an evasion passive, um, yeah, your class should probably be built with evasion because it's really good with evasion. That's how that works. Okay, Mystic is a perfect example of a class that should basically always be built with evasion unless it's tagged. Um, all right, now we're going to go back to our, our little sheet here, and I'm going to explain these one at a time um, because people will get upset. May 1 Musa should always be built evasion. You will see some special education people playing these with damage reduction, but I assure you, you will trade better at closer range. Um, one very important thing to note is that there are a lot of stupid people in the world of Black Desert that are going to try to advise you to do a lot of stupid things with your gear progression. And if you listen to them, you will go backwards a lot of times and you'll find yourself redoing a lot of the progression that you've already done. Okay. There's a lot of people that are going to say that DR, I've drawn this, this graph many, many times. Damage reduction, evasion. Okay. This is the pendulum of what is good in PvE. Okay. All right. This is your pendulum. Okay. Right now, the pendulum is swung really hard towards DR. As I will explain a little bit later, damage reduction builds have slightly more accuracy just built into their build than evasion builds do. And so they do a little bit more damage to mobs in general than evasion builds do. They also feel a little bit tankier. And for a while, they were the dominant thing to use in PvE. But in my time in playing Black Desert, this pendulum has swung back and forth many times. There's been times in the game where you could only really build... We saw Guardians building Evasion in PvE because it was just that good in PvE. Um, like, it was just so, so much better in PvE than DR was because you're just so much tankier. Nothing could hit you uh, because Evasion is just that good. This pendulum swings back and forth um, all the time. Right now, it happens to be um, on as of the beginning of April 2024, uh, the making of this video... Yeah, it's lean towards DR. It's actually not as heavily towards DR as it was last year, though. The pendulum's already begun to swing back this other way. And the reason is the developers have already started nerfing grind zones accuracy. So they've made accuracy less and less relevant in PvE at the high-end grind zones in the game where accuracy is going to matter. Because that's when you talk about DR is better, you're talking about the high-end grind zones only. Low-end grind zones, nobody cares. 
um, like DR evasion, nothing, neither is going to matter. But right now, the developers have already started nerfing how impactful accuracy is at these classes. That makes DR weaker in PvE. And then they started buffing spots like Ulakita for evasion builds so that you feel tankier with your evasion build um, because you, they felt like you were too squishy before. So this pendulum, believe it or not, is actually swinging a little bit more back towards evasion in this case. I think the developers are trying to get this thing right in the middle this time and they keep adjusting it so the dr is not like a year from now it's very possible that dr is probably not the dominant build in pve it's that you can kind of build both okay so understand that when people say oh you should build dr because it's better in pve that's because they're short-sighted uh, and they're honestly misinforming you yes dr is currently better in pve but that's also not the full picture and the reason i'm telling you this is so that you can make the correct decision for your class because when you have to change if you build dr and then decide to move to evasion later it's going to cost you billions of silver to make that change if you make the incorrect decision it's going to hurt um it's going to hurt badly okay so make sure you make the correct decision initially i strongly recommend that if your class has evasion class passives if i have it listed in the evasion column here you need to build an evasion if i have it listed in dr column you need to build a dr okay if i have it list listed in the either column we'll talk about it okay um now very importantly a lot of people are going to say well i like to tag classes what if i want to have a dark knight tag to a striker can i play striker with a dr gear set you absolutely can do that. Any tag in the game, if it's not your main class, guys, it's probably not going to matter too much to you. And if it does matter that much, that's probably your new main. You're probably going to have to re-roll your gear anyway. That's just how it's going to work. So, like, you can roll these back and forth, but understand that evasion classes are more easily played with a damage reduction build than the, than the, uh, than the reverse. If you try to play an evasion Valkyrie, let's say you're a shy and you try to tag a Valkyrie, um, that's going to be kind of rough, <laughs> okay? Because if you're a shield class, you really need the DR from the, like, right, this, trying to go this way on this chart is really hard, okay? Trying to go this way on the chart is way easier, okay? And is doable, but, like, only in a tag sense, okay? Like, I tag, I tagged Mystic for the first time, and I was using DR geared. It was fine. It was not that big of a deal, okay? But, like, if you're maining the class, you really should pick the correct gear chain, uh, gear to play with in the first place now let's talk about uh which which awakening awakening which belongs in this column okay awakening which is strictly better and so is awakening wizard i don't care what anybody has to say about it i've played awakening Witch for three years cosini has played awakening wizard forever he wrote the bible i basically wrote the bible for awakening Witch now both of us agree evasion is the stronger spec um uh if you're playing awakening on witch and wizard however if you're playing succession witch and succession wizard i know this is confusing guys succession is much better with dr okay you can play both okay awakening can be played with dr and succession can be played with evasion it's totally fine believe it or not succession witch actually does have evasion passives they're just not super great, and you end up doing less damage uh, overall because the class struggles with accuracy, and you really feel like you need that accuracy. So the DR is typically a little stronger, at least in PvP, um, on that class. Um, so, like, generally speaking, if you're p playing one spec and not the other, if you're playing both specs, like you like playing both Awakening and Succession, damage reduction. If ever, guys, you are in a situation where you don't know what to build, just default to damage reduction, Okay mainly because you see how many more classes in the game actually play with damage reduction than evasion and also like i said it's way easier to play a striker with dr gear for example than it is to play um a berserker with evasion gear okay so like you always default to dr if you're confused in any way lon is an evasion class this is this is a controversial topic but like believe it or not lon is absolutely an evasion class i strongly recommend playing evasion on lon most of the best lawns in the game, though, if you go visit CTG or Ham stream, if you visit Azrelia's stream, if you visit Khufu, they're all running damage reduction. And you'd say, well, then I should build damage reduction. No, they're better than you. They were born better than you. Their solution is literally not to get hit at all, okay? Because they're so good at their class, they actually just don't get hit. So they'd rather just have the 25 extra accuracy. Like, 
it's literally just that simple the class is supposed to be built with evasion the class is a little bit stronger with evasion overall because it has evasion passives and if you have to ask what to build on lawn you should absolutely be building evasion uh for your lawn okay so i'm gonna move her to this column right here um just so that we are aware okay i'm actually gonna take away uh witch and wizard as well uh as i move these guys i'll put them awakening witch awakening wizard Okay. Sage is a special case. Sage has some of the best accuracy modifiers in the game. I'm not entirely certain if it's technically the most anymore. Um, it might get edged out by one of the other classes, but for the most part, it's got some of the highest accuracy modifiers in the game. So most Sage players do not feel that you need to build damage reduction on Sage. Most Sage players that play it very competitively at the high end are going to be building Evasion Sage. However, you can absolutely play DR Sage and just do more damage. Uh, like, it just, it's up to you. Like, Evasion, a lot of people, Sage is kind of a slow-moving class, and they feel like they can trade better at close range with the Evasion. So most Sages are going to go Evasion, but just bear in mind you can build either on that class. Megu, if you have to ask, you're building Evasion. Okay? Because, again... Some of the best Megus on the server will come to you and they will say, yeah, I build DR on my Megu. It's really good. It's amazing. I do more damage, especially on Succession Megu. They're not entirely wrong. But again, their solution to everything, guys, is I'm just not going to get hit for any reason whatsoever. I'm just going to perfectly iframe everything and never get hit or touched, right? You're a new player. You're going to get hit. You're going to get you're going to get touched all over on the doll. You're going to have to show us where they touched you like you. You need to build evasion. It's got evasion passives. It's absolutely an evasion class. You will feel tankier with evasion in PvE and PvP. Go for the evasion. Um, but it can be built with DR if you're an incredibly good Megu, and it can be played with DR if you want to. Totally fine. You can tag it if you're a DR build, and Megu will feel just fine. Um, Sorceress. This is an extremely controversial topic, so I'll make it very simple for you. You're going to build evasion. Okay, you're going to build evasion because if you have to ask, you're building evasion. Some of the best sorceresses in the game, especially in Europe, build damage reduction on this class. But that's because, again, their solution is I'm just not going to get hit, idiot. You know what I mean? Um, so like if you just don't get hit ever, sure, damage reduction can be a viable option. But Sork absolutely has evasion passives. It should be built evasion. And I think that late game, especially if you're an awakening Sork and you have to stand there and trade for longer periods of time, um, yeah, you should probably be building evasion. If you're a succession Sork, um, again, build evasion unless you're a god. If you're an absolute god, in which case you probably don't need this guide to tell you. But if you need this guide to tell you, you should be building evasion. It's just that it's just that way. It's just that way. Uh, Tamer. Tamer can really go either way. I see a lot of Tamers build DR. Um, Tamer is also an extremely hybrid uh, class. Um, we'll go ahead and go take a look at my Tamer uh, right now. Again, this is the check. You would go over here. Okay, it's got a... It's got... Okay, there's your special attack damage passive. Magic AP. Magic AP and HP. Okay, sure. Uh, this looks like accuracy rate and stamina, accuracy rate and stamina. Okay, that's really good. I'm not seeing any evasion classes, or I mean evasion uh, passives here. I do know, however, that there are some um, there are some pre buffs that uh, Tamer can do. I forget what the the key combinations are, but there are some skill combinations that uh, or like skills that Tamer can go throw out that I'm pretty sure give her some evasion. Um, but like overall, I think that most Tamers are going to build DR. Uh, in almost every case, uh, mainly because they have so many iframes uh, and they don't have the crazy evasion passives to really make the class super viable uh, on evasion. Um, yeah, Awakening Tamer can do evasion. Yeah, see, there you go. Okay, yeah, thank you, chat. Um, so, like, it really can go either way. Personally, guys, I would build damage reduction on Tamer just because, again, I don't feel like the, the passives on the class really warrant uh, an evasion build. And again, you should always be defaulting uh, to damage reduction. Uh, Hashashin builds the character select screen because it's that bad of a class. Uh, you should really just go back and pick a different class because it's dog shit. All right. Anybody have any questions? I'm just kidding. Um, okay. So Hashashin uh, does have evasion passives. Uh, and I do recommend evasion on the class. Um, we're going to come all the way down to here. However, some of the best assassins in the game 
will go damage reduction on this class. So like, if you're like, you're like, man, ah, like it, it's kind of on the fence. I'll be honest with you. Hash is in kind of a rough spot as a class right now. Evasion will help you trade better at close range. DR is probably going to feel a little bit better in PVE. And maybe you do a little bit more damage in PVP too. Like personally, I, I truly think that Hashashin can be built almost either way, depending on what you want to do. So if you're building for the strictly for like you're a diehard Hishashin, sure you can build evasion. If you think you're gonna get really good at the class, DR probably. Um and DR again, if you want to default, just be like, I don't really know I'm on the fence. You can build DR. Um no matter what you do, guys, do not build hybrid. That's just not what you do. Okay. Um honestly, default on Hishashin. It's got ev evasion passives. You probably should build it with evasion. Uh, but again, you can default to DR if you're kind of on the fence or if you know if you're a known reroller guys if you know that you can't lock down any one class and you constantly are going to roll to other stuff play damage reduction build dr every time if you know yourself and you know you can't lock down one class build damage reduction and just stick to it okay all the evasion classes can be built with dr no problem um it's are you going to feel a little less tanky sure but just be a legend you know you're a legend anyway that's why you're playing all these different classes it is what it is. You're a BA rat. What are you going to do? Uh, anyway, this is the list, guys. Um, this is the like the kind of like the build path that you should take uh, no matter what on your class, especially if you're following uh, my guide. Okay, now we're going to go back to the gear uh, list. I'm going to go through the damage reduction build first. Then we're going to go through the evasion build. Okay. All right. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to start finishing your Jatina pens. Okay, your 565 gear score, you're fresh off seasonal uh, a couple times. You finish seasonal, what, on three different characters at this point? You're at your Tet Jatina. You need to be doing your weeklies for your uh, Jatina pins, okay? Um, now, these weeklies have gotten a lot easier to do for a number of different reasons since the last time I made my guide. Um, but basically, you run straight over to this person right here. Jatina is going to have some quests for you. Um... I do not have these quests anymore um, because I've already done my, my stuff, okay? Uh, but I can you can accept quests here uh, that will give you quests for basically every single boss item in the game. Okay, so you do those weekly quests for your Jatina by doing your Dark Rifts. Do your Dark Rifts. They'll give you latent auras for bosses that look like this and concentrated boss crystals. Okay, and these late Naras. You turn in two of these late Naras a week um, for to get your pens done for your boss gear. Okay, and then you can, and then these concentrated boss crystals are what you use to make the boss gear. So like, again, just go out and do your dark rifts every week and you should be able to do your weekly every week. Okay, very simple. Okay, um, if you're a damage reduction build, you're going to go for Beg's Gloves. And you're going to go for Uragon's Shoes. Okay. These two items are your damage reduction build. Okay. Damage reduction build. All right. If you're in a... ER. Okay. If you're an evasion build, you're getting Lieber's Gloves. And you're going to get Muskin's Shoes. All right. Do not mess this up. If you build Levers and Uragons, people are going to make fun of you. You build Begs and Muskins, people are going to make fun of you. One or the other. You either pick DR or you pick Evasion. This is where you have to choose. The helmet and the and the uh, the chest piece don't matter. Okay, You're going to build the same one regardless. It's always going to be Red Nose. It's always going to be Griffin Helmet. Okay? Um, in this case, uh, you're going to finish your Magnus quest line. You should have finished your Magnus quest line at this point. If you skip to this part of the guide... If you're a damage reduction build, okay, and you finish your Magnus quest, you can you can do the red nose. Oh, red nose. Okay. It's gonna give you one free pen of your choice. If you're damage reduction, you can either pick the Uragon shoes or the red nose. Okay. The only incorrect choice really is the begs. You could totally have picked the Griffin helmet too. Not the end of the world. Totally fine. You can't mess up this choice unless you pick the wrong uh boots or gloves. Okay, don't do that. That's why I recommend the chest, because you can't up the chest base um so easy peasy okay 
Um, the reason you pick Red Nose over Dimtree is because Red Nose is way less money to Coffrest to C10, um, to Coffrest level 10, uh, than Dimtree is, okay? It's about, it'll save you five to six billion silver, I think, overall, to pick the Red Nose over the Dimtree. If you pick the Dimtree, sell it, get the Red Nose. In most cases, that's going to be cost-effective by about a billion or less silver. Um, you've, you've really f***ed up, though, if you pick Dimtree. Uh, it's really kind of a colossal f*** up, but you'll be fine. Uh, it's no big deal. Um, once you pick your Magnus pen for DR, and this is the important, it's a thousand coffer difference. There you go. It's three or four billion. Okay. Um, well, I guess it's like two and a half billion to like three and a half billion. It, it kind of depends on the price of coffers, I suppose. Um, okay. So for your guaranteed pens, guys, for DR, you're going to do Uragons and Griffins. Okay. This is different than the previous guide that I made. You're going to do Uragons and Griffins every single time, okay? Th these are the two Jatina guaranteed pens that you're going to do through that weekly quest that I just showed you, okay? Um, you're taking this from the Magnus. This is, again, Jatina DR build. Okay, and you're purchasing your Begs Gloves. I know what a lot of you are going to say. Well, I want to make it myself. Don't worry about this. Okay? Purchase. Okay? Do not worry about buying your bags. They don't have my name on it. When you put your bags to C10 and you turn them in for your fallen god, it will put your name on them. It'll say you made this. It's like taking your friend's homework and he says change it so it's not the same. You just erase his name and then turn his homework in. And then he doesn't even have any homework. He's the one that fails because he's a loser for giving you his homework in the first place. He shouldn't have done that. You just punish him. It is what it is. Okay. You're just going to get your name on it anyway. So nobody cares. Just buy it. Okay. That's just how it is. Okay. This is how you're going to get your pens. When you go to get your guaranteed... Um pens remember i talked about you're gonna get levers right and you're gonna be muskins okay but you're gonna buy your muskins if you're an evasion build okay this is a buy okay this is the jatina uh jatina magnus okay that's how you're getting these the other thing that you're gonna do you're only gonna take one pen weapon okay you're going to take one pen weapon, and it's going to be the Kudum every single time. In a DR build or an evasion build, you're going to take the Kudum, okay, um, from the guaranteed pen system every single time. If you are, you're also going to log in. Uh, this is the Jatina weapon that you're going to take. Again, this is for a DR build, okay? The way you're going to get your Awakening or your Pre-Awakening is it varies. Whoops. Um... If you are an Awakening player and you play an Awakening class, you need to take the Tet Blackstar Awakening that the that the challenge rewards are going to give you. Okay, so when you hit this Y menu here, you hit level 61, uh, it's going to give you a Black Star of your choosing. I don't know where uh, in here, but it's going to give you a Black Star of your choosing. It's going to give you a Black Star of your choosing. I'm going to make this super easy for you. If you're an Awakening class... You're going to pick the Awakening Black Star. If you're a Succession class, you're going to pick the Pre-Awakening Black Star. If you are a Moron, you're going to pick the Offhand. Okay? Um, so, like, in basically, if you play both of these, if you feel like you play both Pre-Awakening, or you play both Succession and Awakening, you're going to take the Pre-Awakening Black Star. Okay? Um, so... For all intents and purposes, I'm going to put a Tet uh, Black Star main hand on here. Because, uh, again, you just get that for logging in and getting, um, you know, whatever. The only people that took the Tet Black Star offhand are the experienced players that already had two pen Black Stars. I, for example, took the offhand because I already had two pen Black Stars there uh, and didn't really care uh, at that point. I also had a C20 Kudum at that point as well. Okay. So I'm just going to put this here, but it, very well, it could be here. Okay. I understand at this point, this is just like a login. This is just a challenge reward. We're hitting 61. Okay. Um, all right. At this stage, you're 266 AP, 333 DP. Okay. You're going to start finishing, um, 
like your all your pens and stuff you're gonna keep it you're gonna keep grinding for your accessories and stuff eventually um you're gonna finish up your jatina pen okay uh eventually this is gonna get finished up and for a new player that might happen sooner than later so i'm just gonna go ahead and move that over uh to pen right around this time guys when you've got full pen uh boss armor and weapons you've got all your kaposhas your jatina pens finishing up your gear is looking really good this is when you're going to be going to orc camp okay but more importantly this is when you're going to clean your room as we call it okay this is when you want to do your adventure logs okay if you watch very carefully you can see about 80 hours of your life get sucked away in about one click watch wow look how impressive that was that's crazy thoughts and prayers okay thoughts and prayers but like the adventure logs are in this adventure log window over here some players find them fun most players are probably not going to find them fun because there's a lot of apdp gated behind these adventure logs um here you want to start with bartali's and kind of work your way through them i highly recommend doing the ap ones first and then working your way back to the dp ones do not skip pavino greco's log this 600 hp log is crazy important if you're in if you're a pvp -er, okay if you're not a pvp -er, and you don't plan on doing any pvp you can put off pavino grecos for a little while longer till you're about 650 660 gear score but if you're a pvp -er, you're in a t1 t2 guild you need to do this right away okay um it's like basically bartali's get some of the other stuff done and then get that done okay um very very important but for all intents and purposes i'm just gonna check all these and make sure that these all get done um at this point you finished all your main story you finished your adventure logs and your 616 gear score okay um there's a lot of incorrect things to do at this stage and this is where players start to un not understand what to do next uh in black desert so be very careful about how you proceed 278 342 you're still grinding at orcs you don't quite have the ap uh or the dp to do giants you can technically do giants you'd just be doing it a little slowly and you'd be kind of like sitting on a casting couch uh understand guys that the reason i'm gonna leapfrog you through gear score and this is a general guide um for anyone's gear score is that initially you want to hit 269 ap okay and you want to hit 330 dp after you hit 330 DP, you want to go to 281 AP. After you go to 281 AP, you want to go to 360 DP. After you do this, you want to do the 301 AP. And then after you get to 301 AP, you want to get to about 390 DP. Okay. And then you want to go to 305 AP. And then you want to go to 401 plus DP. Okay, and then you want to go to 309 plus. These, hitting these brackets for gear will help you leapfrog to different grind zones in the game. I'm not going to go through every grind zone and how optimized it is. You will start to understand this as you go. Understand that I'm experienced enough to tell you that you need this to grind orcs, right? This is, this is what you need for Giants. This is what you need for uh, Gif and Raza. This is what you need for Dekia. This is what you need for endgame spots, right? Like, like, there's a reason that I'm telling you to do this stepwise progression, okay? So, like, if you ever get lost in your gear, you're not sure what to do next, this is kind of the flow of events that I highly recommend doing. Let's talk about AP um, in BDO. Why am I spaying 269 AP? Why that specifically? Um... It's because in BDO, we have AP and DP brackets, okay? So you'll notice that, like, you get... <sighs> BDO is very confusing. It's very, very confusing, okay? You get bonus... Oh, my God. You get bonus AP for having a certain amount of AP, okay? So you'll notice at 257, you get 83 bonus AP. But the second that you have 261, keep in mind, this translates... This is your sheet AP, your sheet AP, when people talk about your sheet AP in BDO, they're talking about this number right here. Whatever this number says right here. Okay? Um, so if you have uh, 209 sheet AP, you're getting 30 extra bonus AP just behind the scenes. Extra bonus AP. Okay? Um, if you hit, you notice 269 is actually bolded. Look how much more AP you're getting per level through 261 265 269 these are really big ap cutoff brackets okay and the game gets really complex 
uh when you talk about stuff like this so like i'm trying to dumb it down for you guys there's also dp brackets in the game so you get bonus dr so the reason i said that you want to be 401 dp is because you're going to get 30 percent extra bonus dr that's especially impactful for dr damage reduction classes uh in the game uh it's it's important for evasion classes too before you get ahead of yourself it's important for both but damage reduction especially um but you can see the different cutoffs for dp at these different brackets here you don't need to get into the specifics guys don't get into the weeds just follow that previous little sh sheet that i showed you and it should kind of push you straight through uh your dp uh the way you need to go uh your ap and your dp the way you need to go so that you can continue pushing to the next grind spot and making more and more money per hour and staying more efficient um, now let's go back to the build path here. Um, as again, this is our DR build path. Uh, we're kind of gaming at this point. Uh, you can see it. We're at 342 DP, 278 uh, AP. Uh, at this point, um, you kind of need some AP. I'd love to see you get some more AP, but also you don't have enough DP to quite be relevant. So we're going to get DP first. Okay. I highly recommend before you go building any of your dead gods and people mess this up all the time, you can just go straight for one dead God instead of doing this, but this is the cheaper route and it is more efficient. You go to C6 on each of your armors. Okay. And you'll notice how much DP you have. Okay. 366. We're huge. And we can grind giants now. Now we want to do this a little bit more efficiently. So now we're going to trade out for some stuff. We're going to make some big changes. This is your most expensive upgrades to date is Vel's Heart. Ooh, very expensive. But more expensive than Vel's Heart is going to be the Tet Distortion Earring. Okay. A lot of people are going to try to tell you to build Tongue Rat Earrings. And it's important that you understand that that's how you tell who has more chromosomes in the Black Desert community. Okay. They have more chromosomes than everyone else in the room. Okay. You're going to build Distortion Earrings. You're not going to build Tongue Rat Earrings. Okay, I don't care. They're going to tell you all this nonsense about how there's a five set effect and how you can get some extra AP and all this stupid shit and how you can save some DP. It's terrible. Don't do it. Okay, you're going to build distortion earrings and you're going to like it. The reason that you let, want to build distortion earrings in this case, in, in basically every class, understand that black distortion earrings give you minus four DP, but they give you a lot of AP. The reason this is important is it helps you grind at higher end grind zones uh, and it gives you a lot of AP and accuracy because it's had a lot of accuracy for an earring um, really quickly. And you can make up cheap DP at this stage of your build is really cheap. You can get DP for pennies on the dollar. Getting this much AP, very difficult to come by. Distos are absolutely required in any mid game Black Desert Online build. Um, we will talk for a moment about how stupid the Tungrad build is. Um, they are, they did just announce that they're coming out with a three set and a five set effect, uh, for tongue grads. And I understand that the only people that really want to build that are people that are trying to reach 200% BSR for node war and siege. Okay. Do not build five set tongue grad. You can build three set tongue grad is fine. We will talk about that a little later. Five set tongue grad is terrible because you have to get rid of your distortion earrings to do this. And the trade-off AP and accuracy wise is just not there guys i'm telling you right now it is just not there um for the amount of sacrifices you're making in your build okay so the distos are definitely the way to go um three set tongue rat is also the way to go i'm not going to outline it here but we will talk a little bit about it later it's totally fine if you want to build a tongue rat ring belt or necklace uh we'll talk about that in a little bit but do not build tongue rat earrings distos are just flat out going to be um the better option that's why for the jatina pen you don't want to get a pen tongue rad for that either okay um as far as crescent ring goes you're gonna finish your second jatina pen as well as you go here so i'm just gonna go ahead and fill this in you need to finish your second you get two of these the game is gonna give you two pen crescent rings guaranteed through that menu that we talked about before okay so you're eventually gonna finish that and you're gonna replace it um it's going to happen somewhere in this time. So I'm just kind of going to put this in here. It doesn't have to happen right now. You can put it off till later if you want to, because at this stage, you need to build more DP. You understand that your DP is getting a little bit low, but your AP is looking really good. Okay. We need to get your DP back up. I highly recommend at this point, you're going to start going for fallen gods. Okay. Fallen God armor is the upgraded version of your current boss armor. Okay. It's the end game boss armor. You have to get to Kafras level 10 on your different, um, uh on your different boots and stuff and then you have to have the appropriate flame to upgrade your armor okay um 
in this case the first everyone's always going to ask which one do you upgrade first most people are going to tell you the chest piece believe it or not it's actually the uh the gloves are definitely the cheapest flame on the market i will double check to make sure that that is the case uh in this case but uh why did it not flame okay flame okay there we go uh yeah so this is the flame for this is the flame for the boots you can see how it's 335 million silver uh or this is the gloves i'm sorry the gloves right here 335 million silver this is the flame for the boots you can see how that's 10 billion silver um at maximum price um and there's also the flame of frost this one is 2 billion uh typically this is for your helmet okay and this is the one for your chest piece it's only a billion silver and they're typically always sitting on the marketplace um or you can go grind them yourself a lot of players choose to grind them themselves um but understand that the boots are just so easy to get because you're gonna get a lot of this stuff for the main story when you do the land of the morning light storyline you're gonna get a lot of the stuff especially if you're doing boss splits as well you're just basically gonna get this for free it's not gonna matter so i recommend upgrading the belts or the the gloves first here if you're a damage reduction build, I'm going to make it really easy. You're going to make the blue one. Damage reduction is the blue one. Okay. So when your when your gloves hit C10, you're going to trade them in for the blue gloves. You'll notice that these have the same stats as the C10 bags. Now you have to enhance these too. I recommend getting them to duo and letting them chill. Okay. Pry is really easy. Duo is, I say it's free. It's not actually free, but like it is, it should be easy for you to get to duo. Uh, you do not cron duo, just raw dog it. Okay. It's like 110 fail stacks. You just keep clicking it until it goes. Don't cron it. <laughs> um, you can click a uh, pry like 60 plus fail stacks. Click it until it hits pry. Uh, then click for duo on like 110. You'll be fine. Uh, it should go to duo in short order. Okay. Um, some people struggle with these it took me 26 attempts to get them but like some people just one tap them you know what i mean but like you do need to get them to duo it is relatively easy speed uh, like as far as getting dp and like gear score goes it's kind of easy uh but i'm just gonna put them at duo um you'll notice we're at 364 dp now okay we've hit this bracket now we want to get to 301 ap okay how are we gonna get to 301 ap well in most cases okay also i want to talk about your last two vala piece here um if you it could be your tuvala main hand it could be your tuvala awakening whatever in this case i took the tet black star here but right here you never want to take your awakening you need black stars in every slot okay do not do c20 as of the making of this guide we actually don't know uh what the fallen god weapons are actually going to require but we we do know for a fact that black stars pen black stars will be exchangeable for the fallen god weapons that is and godders as well so if you have got Godder is totally fine as well. Um, I'm going to work with Black Star here. I will explain Godder here in a second. But like, as of the making of this video, we have no information on this. C20 Dandelions, C20 Kazarkas are not guaranteed to be turned into Fallen Gods. It's possible that they could allow us to do that later. But I am not going to make this guide on the hope that they're going to do that. Understand that I will come out with a new guide video if they if they correct this. Um, or I'll at least make an addendum on YouTube um, if they do come out with something here. Because, like, if they allow you to turn in a C20 dandy for a dead god weapon instead of a pen black star, well, then you're never going to build a, a Ted black star. You're never going to go the black star route ever again. You're just going to C20 a dandy and move on with your life. No big deal. Um, but, again, I don't. we don't think that they're, they're going to do that. Okay. Uh, I will put a godder here um, just so that people understand that you can do either. Okay, Godder, understand that what's the difference between Godder and Black Star? It's really simple, guys. Um, Black Star is one and done. You one tap, 5% chance on a 200 stack or a 4% chance on a 200 stack. You click it, it's like four and a half bill a click. You, or like it's like five bill a click. You click it, it eventually goes, it hits pen, you're done. It's plus nine AP all in one chunk. The Godder, okay, at base, a Godder is a Tet Black Star. You enhance it to pry, it gets some AP. You enhance it to duo, it gets a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. And then at pen, it's a pen black star, okay? It takes less crons per click, but it's still like 5% chance every single time you try to click it, okay? Um, yes, I understand some people in chat are saying the purple is prettier. Understand that you can hit a pen black star and then change it to the purple one, okay? 
I personally like the hit it, the one and done method. I would rather hit one 5% chance one time, even if it is more costly a click, than hitting a 5% chance five king times in a row, wasting all of those fail stacks. Because keep in mind, you have to have fail stacks every time you do it. Uh, and then the crown stones to click it every time. Goddard, in my opinion, is just not worthwhile, but like it is what it is. Um, yeah, plus the durability when it fails. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just don't feel like the Goddard is necessarily worth it, but it is an option if you want to do it. I recommend Black Star in almost every case. Uh, now that we've talked about that, I'm going to go ahead and move it back over. Um, okay, so at some point, you do need to have Tet Black Stars in your Awakening and your Pre Awakening. Okay, you need to upgrade this at some point here. Even if you're a succession class, your awakening AP does matter. It feeds into damage for your succession. So if you don't have, if you have an awakening, if you have a pen to Vala here, you're gonna be doing way less damage than if you have a black star, especially in PVE. Um, okay, so at this point, we need to get you to 301 AP. There it is. Okay, this is an extremely, this is the most expensive upgrade to date. If you do not want to do this, that's fine. There are other ways of going about doing this that are a little bit cheaper for sure. Okay, um, understand that you can get a pen ogre, which is 5 AP, uh, and then you can get a pen belt, which is 3 AP. That's 8 AP right there. It will push you over the bracket for both. Okay, if you play both pre awakening and awakening, I would put off getting pen black stars until last thing. Okay, so if you play both specs of your class, you should definitely upgrade your accessories first. You go for the ogre, uh, you go for the belt. I highly recommend the Voltara belt to most builds in general. You can go for the Tungrad belt. It gives you one extra AP. It gives you some uh, BSR regeneration, like, like maximum regeneration capabilities. But overall, I think the Tungrad belt is a very lackluster belt. Uh, you're like, oh, it helps me hit the AP bracket. Well, there's a million different ways that you can hit AP brackets, and you're going to hit that AP bracket anyway. You've basically just screwed yourself out of 100 HP. Uh, HP. The Volatara Belt gives you HP. It's the slam dunk choice basically every time. 125 HP, I apologize. Um, so you can hit, you see 302, 304, uh, 667. Now, if you had a Volatara Belt, I mean a Tongrad Belt, you'll notice that you'd be 305 here. Okay, so you'd hit an extra bracket. 305 is the bracket. 301 and 305 are big cutoffs for AP. We talked about the hidden AP uh, brackets before. 301 and 305 are massive cutoffs. So you can do the tongue grab belt. It's not the end of the world. I think the, uh, the Voltara is better because you're just going to get that AP anyway. You can just do a... You can C7 your Kudum. You can upgrade something else. Um, that being said, if you're playing one spec or the other strongly recommend just going straight into a pen black star if you're a pre-awakening build bam pen black star main in and the reason is you're going to get monster damage in addition to the ap uh and your pve you're going to make more money per hour way more money per hour than if you went for the ogre uh and the belt okay now it is going to cost you more money though pen black star costs like 150 bill overall this is probably going to cost you about 90 bill okay to get the belt and the necklace okay so it is going to cost you a little bit more money, but like this is, you're going to have to do this eventually anyway. Okay. So, but for now, we're just going to sit with the Black Star. Um, at this point, we're 303 AP. We're like, okay, we have enough AP. We need to get to 390 DP. Uh, the way you do that is you finish out your Labresca. You finish out your Fallen God. Okay. We're at 384. You're going to exalt your Veil's Heart. Okay. Um, right around this, to, uh, right around this stage, um, even like, well, before you exalt your Vels, uh, right around the time you're putting duo on all your different fallen gods here, this is when you want to put accessories on your cups. Like right around 650, 660 gear score um, is right around when you want to put accessory cups um, on your stuff, okay? I am partial. I think the HP rings are objectively better in almost every case. If you're only a PvE Andy and you only play PvE in the game, which, by the way, is basically impossible, um, yes, you can warrant going for the crit cups are fine. Um, totally fine. Um, this one, you want to do DR. Okay, every time, do not go for the AP. Even in PvE, the DR helps you more than the AP does. Okay, uh, this one is the cheapest one. You should put the HP on your necklace immediately. There's no choice there. You just, it's like 150 mil off the market. You just go get it. You get these cups through the Sur grinding Serendia Elvia, or you can just buy them off the market. They're a couple billion silver a piece. So understand that what I just told you to do is two, four, um, six, uh, probably about six, six and a half billion silver, uh, in general. Um, 
Okay, uh, there are cups for your earrings. You do not need to put cups on your earrings right away. They're kind of whatever. I don't like, I don't like putting cups on accessories until they're pen, but like you can, like if you've got the materials available, I'll go ahead and deck them out. It's only three extra AP. It's like whatever. Um, like the belt is five billish. Okay, yeah, well even still, okay. So the belts are really expensive, but that's why you're doing them at 360 plus gear score. That's why, again, I don't recommend getting accessories on your stuff until you're like 360 plus because the stats are really just not going to be super worthwhile for you uh, until you hit that uh and when you do it make sure you get the the rings first typically especially if you're going to do the crit damage you get the rings first after obviously the necklace you can get the necklace right away then do the rings then you do the belt then you can do the earring um right around the time you hit 687 gear score this is the time when you need to get Garmoth's heart okay 680 ish gear score is really around the time when you're looking for Garmoth's heart um, you can get, uh, partial Garmoth's hearts off the marketplace and you should do this really early. I forgot to talk about this before. What are they called guys? Just like Kudum. Uh, I'm not sure if the heart of Kudum is this for the offhand. Yeah. So you should buy a heart of Kudum off the marketplace, like really early on. It's right around 610 gear score. Right after you do your journals, guys, get a heart of Kudum. Okay. And then get a Karanda's heart too. Okay. These are the two things that you should get. It's a billion silver slam dunk. Karanda's heart gives you what? One crystal slot. Very, very valuable. Super, super good. We're going to talk about crystals later in their progression at the end of the guide. Uh, but like you should be getting heart of Karanda and heart of Kudum basically right when you hit 600 gear score, right around the time you're doing your journals. Um, then once you hit this stage of your gear, you're going to upgrade them to the double Garmoth's heart. This is when around the time that you want to make your Kudum a fiery Kudum. Um, or actually, this is a DR build. We're actually going to start talking about Nuver now. Uh, you're going to make it a fiery Nuver. Do not, in a damage reduction build, do not put your Garmoth's heart on your Kudum. <laughs> um, and then you're going to make this a fiery Black Star. Okay, the fiery means that it's enhanced with Garmoth's heart. Around the time that you're going to get Garmoth's heart, you should also be getting your Kabua's um, artifacts. Uh, also, you can get Kabua's artifacts earlier. <coughs> They make you really tanky in PvE. So, like, especially for a class like Dark Knight, if you feel like you're really squishy in PvE, Kabooz is a good option. Um, so, definitely, definitely a good option there. But, like, the problem is they're 10 billion silver apiece. So, understand it's 20 billion silver. Uh, but you are getting uh, quite a bit of stats. You're getting 100 HP. You're getting 20 monster DR. And then 7 AP to mobs. It's really, really good. So, like... But right around 360, 380 gear score, okay? Uh, artifacts and artifact sets, I'm not going to touch too much on. Uh, but in the late game, there are three or four artifact sets that people run very commonly. Uh, there's a Kama Sylvia artifact set. Uh, for Kama, There are three types of mobs in Black Desert. There's Kama, uh, Kama Sylvian mobs, Demi-Human mobs, and Human mobs, okay? When you hit the mob, it will tell you above their name what it looks like. Or what type of mob it is. I will go hit a mob to demonstrate. Okay, so if I walk up and I hit an orc. You can see the, the icon next to the firewood orc to the left there. Um, shows you that it is 100% a, a, uh, a demi-human. That's what the demi-human icon looks like. Um, is it looks like a little orc head. This is what common damage looks like. Again, you're looking uh, up at the top, le or, uh, top of your screen up here. There's going to be a little icon uh, when I go to hit the mobs here. Okay, I killed them in one shot. There you go. Right next to the mobs, you see the antlers right there. Uh, that is Kama Sylvia. Okay, so those are Kama Sylvia mobs. By the way, just because the mobs are not in Kama Sylvia does not mean they're not Kama Sylvia mobs, guys, just so we're clear. There's a lot of mobs in the game that are Kama mobs that are not in Kama. Uh, again, guys, we're looking at the top left, or like the center of the screen here. Uh, you're going to see what the human damage icon looks like right there. You see it's a hooded figure. It's like a blue hooded figure. If you see blue hooded figure, that means it's human damage. Okay. Um, so those are the three mob types in the game. Okay. So that's what animal looks like, guys. You saw the Kama Sylvia had the antlers. There is a fourth mob type. I apologize. There is a fourth mob type called animal. You can only really um, buff these up with monster damage. This is what it looks like here. Um, so you can't build an artifact set specifically for this unless it's just monster damage, in which case you can just build predations. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about artifacts now that we know that. Now that we know that there are four types of mobs in the game, not three. I uh, There are three that you can build for. I should have oh, specified this. 
but there are different artifact sets that you can build for in the game i have multiple different as you progress through the game you're going to want to get different artifact sets death blow is an outdated artifact set before you have kabua's artifacts guys you should just put every all your light stones should just go into monster ap artifacts the way you get these is you just go grind go grind they they will be they will drop at your grind zones you can tell which artifacts drop at which grind zones uh by clicking monster zone info and then just like looking at the looking at what drops it uh, just type in your grind zone and then look at what drops there right you can just see which ones drop there okay um pretty pretty simple okay but you can see i have multiple different artifact sets for different grind zones that i grind on every class is going to have a different artifact set that they really want death blow used to be very common i don't recommend to do this anymore uh because of the um the add-ons change uh and how they changed pve they revamped pve not too long ago uh, i do have the demi human set um the demi human set is like a crap load of demi human damage i have a comma sylvia set as well uh which is comma damage that's sitting on my megu right now um and then i'm working on getting a, a human damage set as well so if you have those three you can basically just rely on those three sets in PvE. They're relatively cheap. It's basically an iridescent and then three of the ones of that type. Um, they're relatively cheap overall. Um, I do recommend if you're super late game, um, note human damage is PvP too. That is true. If you build a human damage PvE set uh, and somebody comes to fight you on your rotation, that human damage also applies to other players. Okay, so human damage is also a good artifact set for PvP. It's good uh, in both both regards okay what about all out attack i was just about to talk about all out attack i have a set for all out attack here i would argue that all out attack is probably the best all around artifact set in the game the problem is that it requires two strikes okay strike is the hardest light stone to get in the entire game and all out attack requires two of them very difficult to get i recommend uh, for very late game players all out attack is basically a great end game lightstone set it's good at every grind spot in the game you can't really go wrong i will note that if you are over the ap recommended for a grind zone spot in order to have like an efficient like let's say i want to grind at giants with like a million ap um i can use the uh human damage set that i have or the, that i'm going to have and i will do more damage to those mobs than i will with all out attack because i'm already at the ap cap for for giants if i want to go to underground gyphon uh, and I, I am already over the recommended AP cap for Underground and Gyphon. I can put on the Kama Sylvia damage and do more damage to those mobs and be more efficient with the Kama damage on than All Out Attack, if that makes sense. So, like, that's kind of what you should do for your artifacts for PvE. There's also, like, Vicious Shadows and uh, a number of different artifact sets. I recommend looking up what's best for your class and then just building that. Um, but, like, if you don't know what's best for your class, you can't go wrong building uh, a human damage, demi-human, and comma uh, setup in some monster damage artifacts. It's super easy to do. Uh, but when you go get your Kabuas, you probably probably want to go grab some all-out attack grab a strike get a vicious shadows or something uh, a little bit more advanced at that point okay okay the difference between nuver and kudum boiled down very simply dr builds use nuver in pvp okay they use kudum in pve evasion builds build kudum in pvp and they build Kudum in PvE. Okay? That, this is why you're putting Garmoth's Heart on your Nuver for a damage reduction build. You are 100% going to have to get both offhands for a DR build. One is for one is for um, PvE, one is for PvP. In Evasion, I know it's unfair, but you only need one offhand for Evasion. Okay? In fairness, DR gets an extra 25 accuracy just based on their gloves. So, like... I think that's a reasonable trade. Um, okay. So, like, you should absolutely put the Garmoth's Heart um, in your Nuver. Um, and I'm going to show that there. But, like, Kudum, you're going to have a Pen Kudum, but, like, you're not going to have a Garmoth Heart in it. Okay. All right. Uh, at this stage, you're about 390 DP, 303. Um, this is around the time you're doing Underground Gyphon and you're starting to do the big dick grind zones in the game. Um, what about the ultimate green uh, evasion uh, accuracy? Uh, yeah, you're not going to build those until your 730 year score, okay? Do not do that. 
Um, at this stage, you need AP again, but you only need a little bit of AP. Okay. Uh, I recommend just the ogre ring here. Okay. This is going to put you over the 305 bracket. Okay. You're at 308, technically. So again, that Tungrad belt could have come in handy. Okay. But like we want the pen black star route here. Okay. So it is what it is. Okay. Keep in mind that if you went for the, the pen ogre and the pen Tungrad before, now is the stage when you're going to have to get a pen black star and it's going to put you way over the top. It's gonna like, like it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of a rough upgrade um for you. Okay. Um, but 308 is totally fine, no big deal. I recommend if you really want that extra 309 AP, you can go to C7 on your Kudum. But if you're gonna go to C7 on your Kudum, go to C8 because it gives you four extra accuracy. Fun fact. Uh C7 gives you the extra AP, C8 gives you the extra accuracy. Doesn't cost a crazy amount of silver. Um, definitely worth it for the one AP. Uh, if you need to hit a bracket, boom. C15 also gives you a bracket, but it's much more expensive. Okay. Um, so we're sitting here now. Now we want to get to 401. Okay. At this stage, you should be able to do uh, Ulakita. You should be able to go out and get your Ator shoes. So we're going to go ahead and put those at Duo here. Uh, you see you're at 400 DP. Uh, with everything all said and done, you're probably going to need one try Fallen God to get that 401 bracket. And then you're looking fresh and clean. Basically, everything is the same for evasion, guys. Okay, but this is the evasion build path. Eventually, these are going to hit C10. You're going to turn it into the to the green version. You're going to turn it into the green version here. Boom. Okay, so let's talk about endgame builds. We're going to do the DR build first, okay? Okay, let's say that you're a guardian. Okay, uh, I wonder if this will allow me... Does it allow me to change it? Please don't reset. You know what? We'll do Valkyrie. Please don't reset. Yes. Okay. So now we're a Valkyrie, guys. Okay. We're a Valkyrie here. Keep in mind, as a Valkyrie, you're going to be running a Nuver. Okay. Um, and this is end game, so I'm going to pretend that you're already C20 Nuver and that you're try uh, dead gods. Okay. Because typically, guys, before you go for your Debarekas, I recommend two try dead gods because the Debo spots can be kind of scary. Um, I recommend two try dead gods because they give you a lot of good monster DR and then make sure you have both your Kabua fragments as well. And then you can go for your uh, Debos. Okay. Now, for an end game DR build, especially for Valkyrie. Oh, sorry. This should be Vaxxed. There we go. We're going to pen our Black Stars there too. Eventually, you'll need your second pen Black Star. But again, this is stuff that you kind of fill in after you hit that, that cutoff where I showed you before where I'm just like, yeah, universally, you're going to get to this point. Then you can pen your other Black Star, C20 your offhand, um, and like look, start looking at like pen um, accessories and stuff. We're also just going to pretend that you pen this at some point. Um, and we'll say that it's a Voltara for all intents and purposes, okay? Okay, so if you're a Valkyrie, late game, the thing that most Valkyries are going to want to do, or even shield classes in general. So if you're a warrior, a Valkyrie, a Draconia, a Guardian, uh, a scholar is not technically a shield class, but it follows the same principle. Okay, so in this case, you see how your full try dead god here with your new run, you're still not 398. At this end game stage, you want to roll your Jatinas. You can change your Jatinas to whatever you want late game. And when you're a shield class, you just turn them into pen narc earrings, guys. Really good. Okay, because once you're this late game, you don't really need the extra AP. Okay. Um, and if you look at our AP with Kudum, okay, let's just look at the Kudum. Uh, you can see we're still 305 at this point. Okay. Uh, you want to replace your rings with typically the best mid game ring um, for shield classes is going to be the. Ruins ring because it gives HP. Remember, we talked about damage reduction builds and really liking that HP. Voltara and Ruins ring are your best mid game um, accessories and even end game accessories for damage reduction shield classes. Just super, super good. Um, so you can see you maintain a really high amount of AP here. And especially if you have a C20 Kudum, you can still see that you maintain 309 Kudum um, even with Narcs on. That's very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. Um, so like, this is the only time when you want to start transitioning to narcs is when you have enough, uh, AP to really keep hitting these big brackets, even with the narcs on. Okay. Um, 
this is kind of what an end game build looks like. Um, eventually, you're going to go for the Dibareka set. Um, I call it Dibareka a lot. People make fun of me, so I'm going to try. I'm trying to say Dibareka more frequently. You're going to get the necklace first in most cases. You're, then you're going to get the belt, and then you're going to get the earring. Um, there is um, Dibareka um, ring. There are Dibareka rings coming, and we're going to talk about what the optimized build paths look like for Dibareka rings at the end of the video here. But for now, there's a three set effect for Dibareka, and there's a five set effect for Dibareka. Right now, on this patch, um, the current best in slot build for a shield class would be something like this. Um, uh, and then you could sub these out for ominous rings, um, or, and then keep the ruins rings. A lot of in game Valkyries like Raiden, um, GTR, uh, he's one of the best Valkyries in the world and writes like guides and stuff for the class. Uh, he has multiple different ring sets, uh, that he can change out for this. He also runs, so he has ominous rings, but he also has cadre rings, if you can believe it, uh, for PVP, which he will also run. Uh, in a lot of cases. So he'll run some Debos, he'll run Narcs, he'll run Cadres. Uh, and if he outgears people, he'll just run them over because they just can't kill him. Um, but like, this is also a super viable end game. Usually, um, what you're looking for late game, guys, ominous rings are accuracy. Okay, these are accuracy accessories. The Lunar Necklace is technically the accuracy accessory for the necklace slot. The Turo Belt is the accuracy accessory for the belt slot. And the Dawn Earring is the, uh, is the earring accuracy accessory. Okay, um... Ominous rings are currently the best way uh, to get accuracy and fit all three Debos into your build, okay? Um, some endgame builds like to put a... If you really feel like you need um, the extra accuracy, you can do this too. It's fine. Uh, keep in mind, you're going to be running Nuver. Um, so, like, you can see your AP with Nuver on is still really, really high, and then you have three accuracy accessories on, you're kind of pumping damage here. But you're definitely a lot less tanky without the Narcs on, Okay. Um, what else? Okay, so let's look at the Kadri build real quick. This is something that uh, a lot of, a lot of really, really end game. You do not do this until you're really end game, guys. Um, players will do is they'll put on some Kadri rings. And notice how, how much AP you're going to sacrifice for this, but on God, you're unkillable. You're still 291 AP awakening. Um, and you're basically just an unkillable monster. Um, in a lot of cases, they're just going to run the three set Debo effect because they run, yeah, it sacrifices a little bit more DP, but they get the three set effect from the Debo. So they still get 295 AP plus the three set 10 AP from the, or like the, what's the, yeah, 12 AP from the Debo set. It, you're doing a lot of damage. You're super tanky. It's really, really good. Um, I have a pen. Lunar necklace, is that useless? No, um, it'll depend on the class. It's a good mid-game necklace, but ultimately the Debareka necklace is always the best end-game necklace in the game. It doesn't really matter. When you compare the Lunar to the Debo, the difference is so catastrophic that you really can't afford to lose that amount of AP or the accuracy gain. Uh, you can do that in a better slot. Um, but Lunar is a solid mid-game necklace. Um, if you're running like a Sork or something, Sork is really good with that. Anyway, these are the different variations uh, that you can run for a super end game player. Uh, again, you're probably going to have Tet Dead Gods at this point as well. Full C20. Okay, so notably for an evasion build, um, you are running a Kudum instead. That means you have innately more DP, but you have less overall accuracy. So you want a little bit more accuracy with an evasion build. Okay, um, so. When you're doing this, when, when you go to build your Debareka necklaces, and again, I highly recommend having at least two of these at try before going for your Debos because um, the grind can get a little sweaty uh, and the mobs are a little scary. Uh, and having at least two of these at try will do you some good. If you don't care, you can have these at duo because you're an evasion build. You can you can run with Kudum and still be tanky. You can try duo, but don't be a little sweaty. Again, I recommend two at try. Okay, uh, you're going to go after your Debareka set. Again, the three set Debareka. We're going to go Pen Debo um, Necklace, Belt, and the Debo Earring. Okay, now, very importantly, your Innovation Build. Distortion Earrings only take away DR. You don't care about the DR loss from the Distortion Earring because you're an Evasion Build, right, guys? So, you can do a Pen Disto. Okay, if you're an end game evasion player, you can absolutely do a pen disto. It's totally fine. I 
it also works really well with the ominous rings the reason i like the pen disto is because it gives you a lot of ap but it also gives you a mid amount of accuracy it's not as much as a dawn earring but it's definitely more than a tongue rad right like it's more than basically every other um accuracy uh, accessory in the game other than the dawn there um at least in the earring slot uh okay so this ominous ring there we go um this is a little bit too intense i'm gonna flip this back there we go um so this is a totally fine end game build here again of course you would end up tetting these um into the late game okay so i'm just gonna kind of tet those out uh we're gonna change this over to a a mystic so that we don't look like an idiot there we go so now this is what an end game mystic could do in theory a mystic could build this now i see a lot of mystics uh they like to build the centaur belt here okay uh mystic and striker love especially if you're a really hardcore evasion class they love pen centaurs um it is a very is in terms of bang for your buck it is the most efficient evasion um accessory in the game so pen centaurs is something you might want to pick up it's relatively cheap uh when you look at the rest of the gear wheel and how expensive that stuff is this is actually pretty cheap and you can sideboard it in of course you're not using this in pve this is only really a pv uh, uh a pvp spec but this is really really good um uh ominous rings are not necessarily required here um especially since oh you don't have very much ap if you have a centaur belt on and a kuda so you can go for tongue rats in this case uh totally fine again tongue rat accessories are totally okay as long as they're not in the earring slot it's i'm not really going to argue too much about it tongue rad uh, again i recommend hp on any frontline bruiser class um you can do ruins or tongue rad is totally fine on an end game striker or mystic build um or corsair for that matter totally fine i think ruins ring is probably best in slot for them uh but like you know you can make a case for the tongue grad giving you the extra ap because you notice that you don't quite hit the bracket without that extra ap there okay do you ever use black star off end on an end game evasion build i think black star off end is totally fine it's technically best in slot by about two monster damage but no one gives a shit uh c20 kudum um has what 37 accuracy the black star is gonna have okay so the difference between the two is very simple um they have exactly the same ap uh kudum is gonna have c20 kudum has two more accuracy than pen black star offhand so the kudum is actually better in pvp okay but the pen black star offhand is gonna have five more monster damage so obviously that's gonna be better in pve it's entirely up to you which one you go it's really not gonna matter either way i have a c20 kudum because it's sentimental to me uh it's the first piece of boss gear that i ever got on the account uh and it's still with me so okay so at this stage again uh dr on the on the belt here don't forget to do that um and again you really want the pen disc though if you're gonna wear uh, a centaur belt you can't really wear uh a dawn earring here um like you could but it depends on who you're fighting ultimately end game guys you're gonna end up with all the different pen accessories and you're just gonna put on whatever you need now very importantly for evasion builds and now we're gonna talk about the green off hands there are evasion off hands for this i think that this one is leather thank you yeah so the pen leather van brace at c20 gives you um 50 62 accuracy never mind i think that is the one. i think nope built the wrong one then he built the correct one um but a big this gives you a lot of evasion so you can put on an evasion offhand if you want to in the end game um if you feel like you have enough ap to get the job done you see how much with the centaurs you're basically never gonna die if you have a pen centaurs with this much gear on um and then an evasion offhand no one is ever gonna kill you and you still have 287 ap this is crazy okay this is an obnoxious build you're just gonna kill everything it doesn't matter um unless they're wearing a, a massive amount of accuracy themselves in which case you're just gonna be like limp noodles hitting each other um um that being said there's also accuracy offhands to counter evasion offhands so if you're a dr build or you're an evasion build and you're trying to kill an evasion build uh somebody that has something like this on so wait this is your this is your accuracy okay so for most classes guys uh you're gonna have an accuracy offhand i didn't realize that for striker it's the same offhand for both i apologize um 
So for most uh, classes in the game, there's a green offhand in the game that gives you a massive amount of accuracy. And then there's one that gives you a massive amount of evasion for which, which is a better example, uh, which has the uh, penultimate parrying dagger. You can see it gives me 130 ish evasion uh when i put it on so i have a full dp set that i run uh with the ultimate parrying dagger um the striker does not have this option uh because it would be super op uh if they ran with something with this much evasion on their offhand okay there's also an accuracy version of the dagger i believe it's the bronze dagger um in this case the bronze dagger has 88 accuracy on it before you ultimate it and you can ultimate it and then you can put coffers in it and you have close to 100 extra accuracy so you can put on a green offhand if you don't have the money to buy uh like the accuracy accessories the accuracy accessories are better bang for your buck in every case but they're also extremely expensive so if you want the budget version of killing evasion builds put on the accuracy offhand and call it a day just figure out which accuracy offhand is best for your class and wear that one um this is typically your end game like dp build you're gonna run blur uh, B L E R, um, in your artifact setup. That is right here. Uh, you can see it's iron, one iron wall, one waves, uh, one iridescent and one mind. My son of wind mind. Okay. That's going to give you crazy bang for your buck. There are a couple different artifact sets that you can run. That's the one I generally recommend. It's really cheap um, and it's really effective. Um, oh yeah, and you're running an evasion offhand. Uh, uh, here, I'm gonna go back to which because it's way easier for me to know what the evasion offhand is for which, you know what I mean? So, okay, this is the parrying dagger. Ultimate parrying dagger at C20, okay? So you can see like this, you're never gonna die if you have this on. It's It's extremely difficult for people to kill you. Uh, if you have this, your evasion offhand, this is the resplendent alchemy stone of destruction, uh, exalted. Of course, um, you can also get the splendid. If you want to do super crazy end game, you can do splendid. Uh, but that's going to be, that's a probably three or 400 billion silver upgrade. Um, that's it's, uh, it's an expensive upgrade for sure. So just be careful about that. Uh, the rest of these, again, you can work your way to this. There's not much progression to this. Start with everything at try. Um, then upgrade everything to Tet, then upgrade everything to Pen. I recommend, recommend the, the Centaurs is the most bang for your buck first. Uh, also, the River Necklace is also really good too. Um, so like, yeah, and then you can just kind of work your way up to, to Pen and just keep working your way forward. Uh, Kabua's artifacts are obviously best in Slot because they give you the most HP. Uh, or al alternatively, you can run Evasion um, on your artifact set. So I have uh, Luscious Artifact All Evasion. Um, both mine are all evasion. That's really good. Can't go wrong. But Kabua's is probably best in slot for it. Um, just because of the amount of HP that it gives you. It's a little crazy. But uh, yeah, that's what an evasion... Or that's what a full DP meme goes. Um, if you're a shy. Um, or if you're a DP witch. Or if you're a DP um, striker or mystic or whatever. Now let's talk about what the Debo ring looks like, guys. Um... They're, they're coming out with the new Debareka earring. As of the making of this video, they're not currently out yet, but we're going to theory craft um, what this looks like um, and what a good end game build in Black Desert looks like for both Evasion and DR together. There's a three set effect and a five set effect for Debareka. I'm not sure what the five set effect is. Three set effect is 12 AP. I don't, I'm not sure what the five is. I, I forget what they said it was, but there's like plus eight. So it's eight more AP. Thank you, chat. Um, so it's plus eight more AP on top of the 12 you got from the three set effect. Okay, so it's a massive amount of AP. Okay, number big or good. Although it's hidden AP. Just bear that in mind. So you want to go for five debos, okay, in an end game build. All right, and let's let's put a kudum here. Let's not grief ourselves, Okay. Let's say we're in an end game build here. We go for five Debos. The last one should be a Dawn Earring. And we've done the theory crafting on this. The Dawn Earring is the most cost efficient per AP lost when you compare it to the, the Debareka Earring. Um, 
Like you only lose a certain amount of AP for this, but you're going to lose more AP for accuracy gained on the belt and the necklace, etc. So the Dawn Earring is the most efficient in this five set. You are worried about accuracy in this build setup. Evasion builds are probably going to destroy you if you have five Deborekas on with a Dawn Earring. Okay, like you probably aren't going to have enough accuracy to kill people that have Tet Fallen Gods on, that have a Centaur Belt on and stuff. Like, it's just not going to feel very good. So just bear in mind that, like, this build might just be a PvE build, in which case somebody might just put on a Disto on top of everything else and just call it. You know what I mean? It's PvE easy. You know what I mean? Um, If you're going for the three set effect, um, I still think that it's probably Necklace, Belt, Earring. Um, Although... I don't know if the ring is more cost efficient. The ring is probably more cost efficient. Let's look at the loss. Let's look at the ominous ring. So the ominous ring has 18. It says 24. That's 6 AP difference. That's only a 5 AP difference. And this is giving 12 accuracy. That's 38. Holy shit. This is giving 28. This is giving 12. Yeah, so it's the... You're, yeah, no. So you're... Don't... You're going to do ominous rings, I guess. Actually, wait. You'd go for the Debo ring. Right? Because you're losing less accuracy on this trade. And you do double dawns like this. And then you do Debo here. Well, you could do a Debo here or you could do a, uh, an Ominous here. It's up to you. But if you're going to do the three set effect, it's probably best to do the ring, the neck, and the belt. It's always the neck and the belt. These are really, really cost efficient. Um, the ring is definitely more cost efficient than that, like... The earring is the most cost efficient, like sacrificing AP. If you want to sacrifice AP for accuracy, it's always going to be the earring that you're going to want to do out on. So like, uh, I can see a lot of people doing like a four set effect Debo. Uh, it, depending on how much accuracy they need, they could put on an ominous ring here if they needed it. Um, like you could put on, like they'll probably have multiples of everything. And like, okay, I need a little bit more accuracy. So they put on the ominous. No, I need a little bit more AP. So they put on the Debo. Oh, I need a little bit more AP still. I put on the five set Debo. E easy peasy. Dawn is the best. The Turo is the second best. I don't know, man. The Turo looked pretty bad. Um, let's see what the Turo's trade off is. Um, so what's the trade off for this? This is 18 AP, 28 accuracy. So this is 12, 16 accuracy for six AP. So you're gaining six AP minus 16 accuracy. Okay. This is gaining seven AP minus 22 accuracy okay so it's really up to you whether you'd like to sacrifice the the accuracy uh or the ap more um it does look like to me the belt looks like it's like one ap is not that big of a difference when you're talking about these numbers it's like whatever who gives a shit um i don't mind one sheet ap very much but this much accuracy is kind of a lot this is like six more accuracy for one ap difference I would say that the belt is probably uh, more cost efficient to make a Turo belt. So you would do this, this, this. This is your three set effect. You would go necklace, ring, ring. And then you would do three over here. Theoretically. I believe I have this correct. Um, this is the most cost efficient bang for your buck accuracy for AP trade based on the maths that we just did. Okay. Your three set effect becomes the two Debo rings uh, with the Debo necklace. Uh, and then if you want the five set effect, it is both Debo rings, the Debo belt, and the Debo necklace with one Debo earring and one Dawn earring. That's the updated gear um, and progression guide for 2024. Guys, I'm always streaming on Twitch. Make sure you come visit me. Um, there's always two new YouTube videos every day, too. The reacts are absolutely banger. If you guys like to laugh at that content, uh, it's a tremendous amount of fun. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, comment on the video for the algorithm gods. Uh, it's my pleasure to help you guys uh, since you guys support me so much.